Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well. Ever feel like you're not progressing as a bassist? And somehow, the more books, courses, tab sheets and music scores you buy, the more overwhelmed and confused you feel. Well, the good news is you're not alone and I'm going to teach you how you can start making real progress today. Stick around because at the end of the lesson, I'll be sharing five top tips and resources to speed up your learning exponentially. So without further ado, roll that intro. During my many years as a bass tutor, I've lost count how many people have come to me for guidance after pretty much drowning in a sea of books, courses, tab sheets and music scores. To try and get direction, often they'll turn to online forums for advice and get 20 conflicting answers to the same problem, further aggravating the confusion. Or maybe they'll try a YouTube search, only to get lost in another sea of conflicting information. In my experience, the answer is simple. Close the books, Put away the tab sheets and music scores for a while and open your ears, mind and heart. Notated music in any form is an invaluable way to communicate bass lines, melodies, arpeggios, scales, etc. Particularly in the absence of a recording or someone to show you it. It's also a great way to understand how to finger a particularly tricky passage. Or simply to know what notes to play if you haven't yet developed the ability to pick out bass parts by yourself by ear. But for me personally, that's where the usefulness ends. Throughout my 35 year long career as a professional bassist, I've only used written notation a handful of times. True story. From the very outset, the goal should be to commit whatever you're working on to memory. Only then have you truly learned something, and that's huge. Learning just one bar off by heart is worth a hundred books sat on a shelf. And it's only through doing this that you'll develop freedom on your instrument. Before we go any further, if we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley and I regularly make content like this to help you become a better bass player. So please hit like, click subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I make a new video. Now, before you shoot me, obviously I don't have a downer on written notation and I would never discourage anyone from learning to read music, but to become a proficient sight reader takes years of hard graft. I'm absolutely in awe of anyone that can sight read. It's a very impressive skill. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! But believe it or not, there are many readers who simply can't play anything unless they've got the music in front of them. The idea of jamming, soloing or playing fills on the fly is completely alien to them. And of course, there are players who can do both equally well. Imagine how many hours went into that. Essentially, what I'm talking about here is taking the knowledge from the page and committing it to your memory and your inner ear. And then, learning music becomes way easier. Remember at Live Aid how Freddie Mercury got the crowd going by singing a line and then getting the crowd to repeat it back? Did they have sheet music? Of course not. They just listened and repeated. And we could totally apply this way of learning to our instruments too. Reading tab and standard notation and playing by ear are both hugely valuable skills. However, you have to consider what your goals and expectations are and where your precious time and efforts are best spent. Let me run two lists by you. List A. If you want to play in a cruise ship band, orchestra or theatre pit band, fancy being the MD of a big band, would like a career as an arranger, want to be a classical or classroom teacher, never want to play bass without a sheet of music in front of you, like the idea of being stuck behind a music stand, don't care for the idea of spontaneously jamming with other musicians, or have no interest in improvising tasty bass fills on the fly, then good reading is essential. Remember, it takes years to get good at this. List B. If, however, you'd like to become an outstanding bassist, be it for fun or professionally, develop your own musical voice on the bass, turn your hand to any or all styles of music, be it funk, blues, rock, jazz, punk, you name it. Develop limitless creative bass lines right out of your head, sing a line in your head, and then just play it on the bass. Jam endlessly without constraints, learn music theory and harmony, Play stunning solos off the cuff. Play music from your heart and soul. Entertain an audience. 
groove like a mofo. Be able to play songs really confidently with great tone and feel. And have an absolute ball doing all the above. Then just basic or even no reading skills are required. However, reaching a high level of musicianship also takes many years and lots of dedication. If list A encompassed all your ambitions as a musician and literally nothing in list B excited you, then my work here is done. With one exception, I can highly recommend an amazing reading coach with a really fresh and exciting approach. Those who are interested, the link is on the screen now. It's also down in the description below. All of list B is 100% achievable without being able to read or write a single note. My advice if you're primarily playing bass for fun or to play with the band would be to put most of your energies into what I'm about to talk about. And then just as much as you see fit into reading, particularly if your time is limited. Focus on what you really want from playing bass and cut the shortest path possible to get there. If, however, you really want or need to master both, then you're going to have to split your time right down the middle. Today, information is everywhere and instantly. It's become disposable and we could just keep going back for more and more and more. And that's the problem. It just becomes this overwhelming white noise. And without focus and or guidance, leads to frustration and wasted time. With that being said, let's pin things down a bit. To become a great all-round musician, it's essential that you develop your memory, ear, technique, song structure knowledge, fingerboard knowledge, scale knowledge, ability to play different styles and genres, timing, tone, dynamics and feel. And the following things are non-negotiable if you genuinely want to progress. Keep your goals big, but the steps to get there small and incremental. Equip yourself with the right tools. Be very patient. Learn to enjoy the journey. Stay committed. Assess your progress regularly. And be flexible on your learning path. I'm 99% self-taught, and since being the age of 15, I've learned almost every piece of music I know by transcribing it by ear from the original recording straight onto the bass. No tab or notation involved, straight from ear to memory. Shortly before COVID, I had to transcribe, learn, and commit to memory an entire two-hour theatre show in five days. This, of course, included all the intros, endings, segues, and even a couple of medleys. Now, that was pushing myself to the limits just a bit, and I did feel pretty nauseous on the day of the gig. Thankfully, I nailed it, and I did feel a huge sense of accomplishment and relief. And if you're interested in how I do learn songs, there's a link on the screen now to a video I made a couple of years ago on how I do just that. You'll also find a link in the description below the video. Okay, so where do I start? I hear you ask. The answer is really simple. Take just one thing you're working on, be it an arpeggio, a bass line, a scale, a chord, a melody, and start committing it to memory in very small incremental steps. A good recommendation might be to learn just one bar or measure at a time. And do not move on until you've learned the first bar 100% off by heart. Then simply repeat this process for the next bar or the next few notes and so on and so on and so on. The aim is to transport you from here to here. Only open the book again to learn the next bar or phrase. Or if you've genuinely forgotten what you already learned and need to quickly refresh. But as soon as possible, drop the sheet music. As promised, here are my top five tips and resources to help you on your way. Always sing or hum what you're playing in your practice time. That way you'll start to hear the notes before you even play them. Always tap your foot or move your body to the rhythm. This is actually proven to improve your groove and timing. And remember, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got a swing. Play along to audio recordings of the original piece. I use a simple but supremely effective app called Transcribe to play the songs I'm learning. With the ability to loop sections and decrease the speed, it makes learning so much easier. If you're not playing along with the original recording, then use a drum machine or a drum track. I use the drums built into the Zoom B1 every single time I practice. It's an amazing practice tool which incorporates a drum machine, an effects unit, a looper, a tuner, and much more. It's highly recommended. If you want to check out the unit for yourself, there's a link in the description below. It's an affiliated link, so it supports the channel, but doesn't cost you a penny more. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.